great audience here. Uh, guys, uh, thank you so much for sticking around after lunch. And I take this opportunity of, uh, you know, uh, welcoming uh, Pratika over here. Thank you, Pratika, for, uh, you know, taking your time to stay amongst us. Um, known Pratika for a very long time, but I would still want Pratika to, you know, give us a quick overview of her journey in the, uh, you know, the overall marketing world that she has spent her time in. Thank you so much. Uh for having me here and I must say that it's a great audience. I was pleasantly surprised when I saw the turnout uh, at the event today and I must compliment Absolutely. the WebEngage team, you know, to put up such a brilliant event together. And I've been literally floating around the floor attending all the sessions in and out and it's, it's been a great learning experience to hear from the industry Thank experts. Um, as Arminder said, I'm Pratika. I currently head digital and e-commerce marketing for Crompton. Uh, prior to this, I've worked with GCPL. I was heading, uh, leading digital marketing for certain portfolios over there. Um, marketing has just been GCPL and Crompton. Before that, I was on the other side, strategy and sales. So I've Correct. seen both the sides of the world and, you know, kind of experienced what most of us go here, go through here and how to actually connect the dots between what a platform has to offer and what a marketer needs. So that's something that I feel, um, you know, has worked well for me. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much, uh, Pratika. Let me start with the harder question for you. Ideally, people start with Don't the easier one. Hard. Let me make it a little tougher for you. And let me, uh, you know, get the audience involved also out here. Uh, Pratika, particularly, uh, you know, in the consumer electronics industry, you see there are so many competitors in the market, all right? Uh, consumers, one of them is sitting right here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Amit is here. Amit, thank you for being part of this session. Uh, uh, you know, there are a lot, there are, there are banal barrage of options available in the market, all right? Would you like to share with us, how do you get your consumers to choose your brand first? Definitely. I wish Amit was also here, I would have asked the same question to him, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm sure we would, would have very different <laughs> answers to that. Um, see, it's pretty simple. I, I, when I say it's pretty simple, it's pretty simple in, in the concepts, but at the end, execution is what, where the challenge lies. Yeah. Um, for Crompton, thankfully, Crompton is a very salient brand, right? It's a brand which has a 95-year-old legacy. Um, today, anyone that I have met uh, in, at this event, the minute I say I'm from Crompton, they're like Crompton fans. <laughs> yes, but I need to establish that I'm more than fans. I'm into lights, I'm into pumps, okay. I'm into kitchen appliances, I'm into multiple plethora of, you know, uh, consumer goods that we offer, which consumers yes. don't really relate to. Yes. Um, so for us at Crompton, currently the task is how do we take that legacy forward, right? Um, fans is easy, we are the market leader in fans. But for me to build that salience for lights, to build that salience when it comes to kitchen appliances where we are currently launching, yep. that's critical. And also, you know, because I come from digital marketing, the kind of consumer journey that these two categories have or these three, four categories have is very, very different. Um, you know, today if I speak to a homemaker or any person who's interested in cooking, if your mixer breaks down, your life you know, you will not cook that day. Correct. You would rather order food. So for us to ensure that we are right there at that time to connect with that consumer and make them buy Crompton over any other brand is what, you know, what we need to build. Versus a fan where we are so salient currently that it's like, Acha, Crompton to hai, let me see what is in the market. Mein. You know, Absolutely. that's what happens. Absolutely. But how do I reinforce that, you know, we are the ones that you need to buy? You know, and digital, e-commerce, marketplaces, competition brands, there's everyone, you know, there's so much happening that you're always on your toes. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, uh, you spoke of journey, you spoke of building that customer affinity, you know, a very obvious question and I'm sure the audience out here is also having that question in the mind. Uh, do you think a, a CEP kind of a platform, a customer engagement platform really plays an important role in building this customer stickiness, customer affinity? I heard someone from the audience asking that question, you know, rings a bell in my mind. Would you like to share how you do it, how do you achieve it at uh, Crompton? 100%. See, um, Harminder, again, you know, we were discussing this in, the, um, in our earlier conversation. Yeah. 90% of my business is still offline, right? Um, any one of you who wants to buy a fan or a light is still going to go to a local electrical shop and say, ye wala pankha de do. Uh, Typical EBO or MBO, say for example. Not even an EBO, an MBO. An I'm MBO. a local okay. electrical outlet, right? Okay. Where, you know, you're building or ensuring that your brand is visible at the store is, Absolutely. Uh, you know, a fight in itself. Correct. Uh, but I know that you are going to the store with the intent that in dono brand me se ek lena hai. Or Absolutely. you have already chosen the brand and that, entire decision making is something which is happening online, right? Okay. Um, 
I'm, I'm 100 percent sure all of us today when there is a need that arises the first thing that we do is go on amazon and search for the product that we want to buy okay. or the category that we want to buy we would look at the prices we would look at the offers what are the competition brands make a decision go to google do a research article article padenge do go to youtube watch a video <laughs> Typical journey. All of us do Typical that, right? Typical customer buying journey. All of us do that, and we are all consumers of one or the other brand. Absolutely. Right? Now, for me, it's super critical that when a consumer is actually looking at a YouTube video, there is a video which says Crompton is the best brand to buy. When the consumer is looking for, uh, you know, which fan size should fit in my ceiling? This is my room ka size. So, should I look at a 1200 mm sweep size or a 1400 mm sweep size? I should have Personal an answer for that. Personal preference plays a very important exactly. role. Exactly. So, I do not mm. want to be present over there just saying that, you know, Crompton ceiling fans are the best, but I should answer the finer nuances also. So, that true. plays an very important true. role. And I think if I am not answering that in some other brand, is, then you lose the game there. All right. Good. Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Pritika. Uh, you know, you spoke of, uh, uh, you know, bringing in that uh, little bit of closeness with the consumer buying psyche, all right. Uh, you spoke of personalization, all right. You know, looking at a little bit on the tech side of this, uh, or rather I should say the functional side of this, all right. Uh, and, and please share your uh, candid opinion on this, uh, Pritika. Uh, you know, there are a there are lot of options available to, you know, uh, marketers like you, and you have a, you know, a big team a huge team that works on uh, this particular initiative of building the personalized messaging, uh, you know, affinity with the, with the particular consumer. Uh, do you think uh, creating a monolith uh, tech stack is something which is of more relevance to your industry or do you think creating an assembled view of all the platforms plays more value, brings more value to your particular industry? What's your thought on that? It's a, it's a very fair question, and that is what we are here to discuss. <laughs> um, see, for us, I, I think the first thing that any marketer needs to do, irrespective of which industry they operate in, is to understand what the goal is, right? Mm -hmm. What is the immediate goal that you're looking at? What is the long-term goal that you're looking at? Mm -hmm. And that also applies from a functional and an organizational point of view, right? Correct. I'm a marketer today. For me, the immediate functional goal would be optimize my marketing campaigns, drive automation, drive media efficiencies. Mm -hmm. There are 10 platforms that offer that. Correct. I'll have to pick and choose the best one from there. Correct. My long-term agenda, if, if I speak about Crumpton, would hmm. be 90% of my sales are happening offline. How do I know whatever media spends I'm doing, either on TV, on print, on digital, what is driving that conversion at the offline channel, Very right? Very true. And that data, because it's not a... EBO, it's an MBO. It's an MBO, correct. It's not even modern trade, it's not even Chroma that I'm talking about, it's your local electrical shop. <laughs> How do I get data of the consumer from there, right? Very important that's the aspect. longer channel. Okay. Uh, that's the long-term challenge that I need to understand and identify. So, as you rightly said, you know, having a single tech platform and expecting that all of these challenges will get covered under that, um, you know, it's an ideal world scenario. I wish that was the case. Uh, for most of us, it would have made our life simpler. Yeah. But that does not hold true, right? You need to pick and choose what works well for us. Correct. And also, another thing that we need to look at is, uh, you know, we were just discussing about this. A lot of time, marketers get into this whole thing of FOMO. Um, you know, other categories are doing that. So CPG has a very different journey from a consumer durable brand Absolutely. versus a beauty brand, right? You need to first assess what is it that you need to do from a business point of view? What is the goal, the end goal that you are driving? Once you're clear on that end goal, then find what are the things that you need to. It's like, it's like a puzzle. If you know what the end picture looks like, you can clearly put together the puzzle much more easily Correct. than trying to, you know, go in blind. Correct. So that's one thing. And also... I, I think every organization today is already working with one or the other platform, right? Absolutely. They would have some level of mar sorry, marketing tools that they would be using. Either it's ORM, either it's a CRM that they CRM have in solution. place. Yeah. Companies have CMS systems, data management, asset management tools that they have already Very deployed, true. right? Yeah. Do I need to build from scratch or do I need to first assess that and say, Achha, these things work for me, hmm. let me build on that? Because everything comes with an investment, right? Correct. So you need to figure that out and build on that. That's what my opinion would be. Correct. And uh, see what works. And uh, you know, just to add, today that assembly is much easier than what it was. Oh, earlier. is it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I would really like to, you know, for the for the sake of the audience, would like to understand yes. how do you achieve that? Uh, 
see there is no shortcut to it and uh, you know however simply simply we put marketing automation in martech stack and we talk about things yeah. uh, the complexities of this comes in when the execution happens mm -hmm. and the beauty of it is that my execution challenges would be very different from what another company faces yep. um, so there's no cheat code you can't really look at acha siska ne ye kiya let me also implement this yeah ye gcpl mein i did this let me implement the same thing in Com in crompton that's not possible right um so for me it's very important that we understand what the goal is as i said and how you can build that together so if you are building on um, you know getting multiple platforms to talk to each other i think most of the platforms have that capability today correct um you can plug and play and build that stack that's absolutely, a better way absolutely absolutely you know going a little bit uh, not you know, taking you back a little bit on the consumer side all right uh, do you do you think effective communication uh, or effective service experience is an important aspect or a remedy to grow business in your industry could you throw some light how you achieve it at uh, crompton i think if i have to put a number to it that is the priority number fun we'll be for me right we'll be absolutely fine to know the numbers <laughs> <laughs> see because um, today's day and age consumers are impatient right uh, we all are if we are buying a product we almost feel like we buy the company you know yeah. we should get the most out of it true uh, and i'm not saying that it, it's wrong that's how i also behave right so it it feels it's bad it's a natural extension of exactly. a buying process but absolutely it, it feels bad when consumers are complaining about your brand but if i if you look it's in fair. hindsight that's what you do so right? weird. i mean absolutely i have a twitter account which i only use to complain about <laughs> products and services <laughs> that i don't like so <laughs> that, that's what it is but uh, you know in today's day and age when everything is so connected and everyone is on digital as i said you know people 80% of the consumers start their journey on digital when it comes to finding a solution their evaluation process for certain categories 60% of their evaluation happens online itself they okay. would make a purchase decision online go offline and buy the product that's a different story but in that online ecosystem it's important for me to ensure that every touch point that the consumer has is sorted and is seamless right now okay. orm or social media people do crib about uh, you know instances that maybe have gone negative for them for a brand um how the service pieces handled right when we are talking about crompton as a brand hmm. installation becomes a big um, you know area of concern for Correct. us because replacement why, warranty replacement, all these aspects are very important for you pankha kharab ho gaya how much is the service you know engineer taking what time is he taking what is the turnaround time for those hmm. these are the things which people talk about while that will be a minuscule percentage of the overall volume that we drive in hmm. terms of you But know it has the, a larger impact on exactly, your topic exactly because hmm. it is what people go ahead and talk about um, not only in person but on social forums as well so that becomes very very important for us to tackle and how we actually engage with that consumer hmm. so suppose you do not have a you know pleasant experience with crompton hmm. and i am going ahead and selling you a portable product just because you have bought from me Correct. i need to know that okay this guy is not happy with it let me tackle it differently perfect just an extension to my earlier question all right uh, you know when we speak of effective communication when we speak of building a customer loyalty considering in your case your entire business primarily premises is uh, 90% offline how do you maintain this you know a uh, channel of communication with people who are buying on uh, offline uh, in your uh, uh, industry i mean how do you engage them how what what channel of preference do you you know um, uh, adhere to if i have to ask see most of our categories that we operate in a high penetration categories so right Correct. today everyone in the world needs a fan um, so obviously mass mediums are what we go after but when yeah. it comes to consumer interaction at a personalized level currently the digital journey is the only one that we are able to track and tackle right okay. as i said for me at crompton the long term journey or the long term solution that i need to fix is how do i get that offline consumer base online mm. and get that first party data into my system Precisely. and then work on building the consumer lifetime value because today if you have actually gone ahead and buy, bought a fan and you're happy with it highly uh, possible and highly likely that you will go ahead and buy a water heater when the winters come in okay right? so we need to find that um how do i say identify what the journey is and you know tap in at the right moment i think that that's very very critical tell me one thing uh 
you have so many products that you, you know, you have to offer your consumers, uh, you know, from Crompton. Uh, and every single product, I'm sure you would have your own targets, even as the head of retail and e-com at uh, Crompton, to, you know, increase the revenue of each and every product. How do you feel or what is your opinion? Uh, how can a, a, you know, a MarkTech platform come and help you achieve that part? Great it's a very open-ended question. And, and I'm glad that you actually asked that question. Yeah. See, it's, uh, Today, if we talk about Crompton and the industry that we operate in, there are two areas or three things why you would need a product from Crompton, right? True. Um, either your current product is broken down, pankha kharab ho gaya, so you need a fan. Mm. Um, you are buying a new house. Mm. You have bought a new house rather than you're setting that up. Mm. Or it's just that you're moving and there's a need for replacement, right? Okay. Three scenarios. Now, for me, that's an opportunity, right? That's a golden window that I have identified hmm. that okay, Harminder has actually moved into a new house. Hmm. He has bought four fans from Crompton. Okay. How can I ensure that I'm cross-selling my other appliances to him, right? Perfect. Um, you live in Delhi, so you have water heater when it's you know summers, we will push air coolers air to you. Coolers, correct. Um, there is a plethora of kitchen appliances, mixer grinder, pop-up toasters, X, Y, Z things, which I know are a household must have today, right? Mm. How do I ensure that I'm identifying this consumer and, you know, if they have bought into the brand, then building onto that. Okay. Pushing the customer lifetime value, upselling the products, cross-selling the products. So Fair. that's that's pretty critical, right? For in, in this business specifically. There are multiple players. There are so many brands which are actually active in the in the category. There's too much competition. True. If you go on Amazon, Flipkart, any of the marketplaces, I mean, it's flooded with options that a consumer has, right? How do I ensure that I am top of the mind? Now, if Very I true. know that this consumer has bought from me, that's an easier sell for me. So right. identifying and tapping into that is critical. But considering your business is offline, uh, how do you how do you bring that uh, you know quotient of personalization? You know, how do you how do you achieve it at Crompton? I mean, that's that's a uh, that probably could be one of your pet peeves. But uh, is it is it really a tough problem for you to solve? It is. See, as I said, you know, consumers are offline, but they do research online, right? So if I know, for me, from a digital marketing point of view, maintaining a high salience, right, on yeah. the platforms that the consumer is actually going on, correct, and that just. That is not restricted just to a Google or a YouTube or a social media ecosystem. That also applies on e-commerce. Um, just to give you a number, we know we did a study internally and we saw that almost 70% of the consumers that we interacted with in yeah. consumer emotions mm -hmm. start their discovery journey on Amazon. Oh, right. Okay. So now if a consumer is actually going and looking for ceiling fan on a platform like Amazon, mm -hmm. it's imperative for me to be present over there. Right. How, how would you engage a buyer or a prospective buyer over there? Over there, it's simple advertising. I'm just ensuring okay. that my product is present, okay. you have a proper listing, Fair. you have reviews, ratings, everything that a consumer is actually looking for. How sure. do I ensure that it's a seamless experience? Mm -hmm. Once I have gotten into the preferred brand uh, you know, category for them. But okay, these are the two brands that I want to evaluate. Hmm. Then the consumer delves into further research. Then you will go ahead and do a Google search about particular product. Is Crompton a good brand? Hmm. Crompton versus XYZ, which brand should I buy? Hmm. Or if you have found certain features, so for example, the latest technology, if you're talking about fans, there's BLDC. If you're talking Correct. about, um, you know, lighting solutions, there could be other things that the consumer is interested in. Fair. If there's, we're talking about mixer grinders, consumers want to know what wattage works for them, what doesn't. Uh, all those things are happening in the Google ecosystem. Ooh. Right? Okay. People mm. go with specific searches. That's not something that you can search on Amazon. Okay. Now, when you're on Google, then ensuring that you are ranking in the best position possible, whether it's Fair. organic ranking, whether it's paid searches, blogs, content. Typical SEO activities to be done online. Mm. And scientifically, because you need to ensure what the consumer is searching for, right? Okay. Um, and being present over there. So that helps. And then obviously, you'll work with influencers, because no matter what, a lot of time consumers do go ahead and look at influencer content to figure out what the brand how the brand is they, like, They right? really, really create a lot exactly. of market for you. It does, it does. I mean, today, if you talk about social commerce that's grown up so much, right? I mean, it's scaling up at a faster rate than we imagined. Correct. But that, that becomes critical. So I need to ensure that I have good enough presence in the influencer world also, which okay. we are currently scaling up. But okay. all those things put together will lead the consumer to a purchase decision that, okay, this is the brand or this is the product I want to buy. Perfect. Then 
the sad part is post that we kind of lose out on that consumer, right? Because okay. if the consumer goes ahead and buys on Amazon, I do not get any oh, data. Probably a lady from Amit, maybe. I, I, then yeah. also I don't get any data. <laughs> <laughs> and if the consumer is going offline and buying yeah. in a retail outlet, then again, yeah. you know, currently we do not have a mechanism where we can capture the data. All right. Um, we do have consumer data from warranty registrations, service requests, installations. Correct. That is a rich database that I'm sitting on. That How is the assembled environment that, you know, we were speaking exactly, of earlier. Exactly, exactly. Perfect, perfect. Now, you know, this is, a, a, you know, a, a thought is popping up in my mind, all right? You think in your industry, a customer data platform or a first-party data platform really is of any significance? Does it really play an important essence in making you understand your consumer or your prospective buyer, maybe? It does. It plays a big, big role, okay. I would say. And especially a CDP, right? Because I'm not, and you're smiling, I can see that. <laughs> we are not just looking at a CRM, right? We're not Absolutely. just looking at marketing automation. That Correct. to a certain extent. See, I always tell you know anyone that I talk to that campaign management is something that there are two platforms, right? The, the two big giants, Facebook and Google. Yeah. They already have optimized it to a certain level, right? Until unless I'm sitting on a first party data which I can then plug in into my campaigns and mm. build on that, mm. there is a little scope for me to, you know, you further go optimize further and, and go or anything. Else. Exactly. Correct. Um, so for brands like Crompton, where there's a lot of installation data, there's mm. a lot of warranty registrations. That rich database, Probably which loyalty I have, programs loyalty that run program, we don't Very run true. any. But whatever, I mean, these are the things where we are collecting first party data. Okay. And that database and activating the database onto e-commerce, onto D2C tomorrow when we launch a D2C site, or when we are talking about, you know, just nudging that consumer to buy again. Because see, the buying cycle is such. A mm. person who has bought a fan doesn't need a fan for the next five years, right? Absolutely. Especially in a market like India Provided where... they end up buying another house, that is also a possibility. I mean, I remember my parents have a fan which... I think it's 25 years old easily. It's a Crompton Absolutely. fan only, but wow. minimum 20 to 25 years old. Wow. So people do not change products easily, right? Correct. It's now the generation that we are in which has gone into the replacement cycle. Otherwise, earlier people were just about repair, right? How many times have you thrown out a mixer grinder? How many times would, have see, would you have seen your mother actually saying, Ki mixi hai, They will get actually through. take it to a repair shop, get it repaired. And then get it repaired, all right. right? So then you say that uh, first party data and the behavioral exactly. aspects, buying patterns, you know, uh, the attributes, the genre that of your buyer awesome. is an important aspect. Exactly. So all if right? I know that you have already bought a fan for me, from me, why should I show you a fan that for the next five years, right? I'm wasting my media monies. But I Very should true. definitely be activating you if you're a dormant user and mm. saying, hey, we have launched new categories. Why don't you explore if any products make sense to you? Perfect. Uh, a penultimate question. Uh, you know, peep, buyers like us, you know, uh, the entire audience out here, we use barrage of devices to come and interact with a particular brand like yours, all right? Now, how do you create that one homogeneous view or a, uh, or a omni view or a 360 degree view of your prospective buyer? How do you, how do you congregate this entire uh, experience? How do you achieve it at Crompton? So we haven't achieved it yet. That's the biggest challenge. We need to, right? Yeah, that and creates room for me then. Huh? That's where our discussion Perfect. started, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> yes, Good. but uh, you know, as a marketer, I think we have identified that it's imperative for us to get a unified profile of our consumer, right? Who Perfect. is the buyer? Who is the person who is buying my product? How much time do they need? What is the purchase cycle like? Okay. Uh, so, for example, I'll again, go back to mixers, right? We know that any person who is buying a mixer grinder, will complete the purchase journey from start to end within 15 days. Okay. That 15 days is my golden window, right? If I do not touch base with the consumer in those 15 days, they I probably have lost. sway away exactly. to your competition. Until then, it's like, okay, we don't want to buy But I'm a very less salient brand in, in kitchen appliances. So Correct. how do I ensure that I actually touch base with the consumer in that 15-day okay. period and work with him in his consumer journey, right? I need a mixer. And his or her preferred exactly. channel. Preferred of channel. Okay. And what is it that they're looking for? See, because when we start, when there is a need, I may just be exploring brands. Sure. Best mixer grinder brands in India. Probably. Mm. That's what I start with, right? But as and when I progress, I've done my research on Amazon, I know two or three variants, I know what the latest technology is. Correct. Then I get into the details and then I get into finer you know, points that I want to research further. Perfect. 
does not mean that I'll back off over there. I need to ensure that I'm with them on that journey, sure. right? And, you know, working with tools like CRM, retention marketing, will only help me understand where the consumer is. What are they Correct. doing online when they're coming to my website? Perfect, and perfect. I <laughs> Hello, please, and, please. and then, you know, customize my uh, communication to them because it's, Correct. I mean, today, no matter how irritated all of us are, and we, I was just attending another session uh, in, in the first hall, which was about, you know, personalization, is it too spooky? Correct. It is. It annoys the hell. And there are times when, you know, my friends would be like, you guys do all this, you know. You know all the information, you hear all our conversations, that's fine. But at the end, it helps us, right? In today's day and age, it I do more not, value to my buying process. I do not have my time usage. to keep going Perfect. back from the scratch, right? Or Correct. starting every journey from the starting point. Perfect. If I have moved from point A to point D, then my journey next time should start from that point Correct. A, right? That's what it does. Perfect, thank you. Well, last question and then I'll open uh, the, uh, the entire forum for the audience. Uh, Pritika, for you, um, what do you think is the state of Nirvana that you want to achieve when it comes to building a good solid marketing automation platform or deploying a good marketing automation platform at Crompton Graves? What is that state of Nirvana? And you can take as much time as you want, you know, to substantiate on it. Okay, so <laughs> I'll, I'll maybe go back to the basics, right? Again, coming to the point that Crompton is largely a brand which is sold offline, not online. That's right. the biggest challenge that any marketer could face, right? You are spending crores and crores of monies on reaching out to these consumers, but you're not getting anything back. Right. That's one of the biggest pain points which I would want to resolve. Right. However, as I said earlier also, you know, marketing or MarTech stack, no matter how much this team here tries and simplify it, is very complex and each brand will face its own challenges. Each fair, fair, journey fair or each organization will have to take its own journey, right, to understand what the complexities are. Fair point. The end goal should be to work with something which is easy to understand, activate and actually drive ROI from, right? Perfect. And um, today if I create something or build something which is too complex, for the team that is working with me to understand mm -hmm. or for the team that has to use the tool at the end or insights from that to take decisions, it's of no use, right? And investment in building a MarTech stack is pretty high. I mean, it's not something that you can just, uh, you know, whip up. So that's, that's very critical. I think AI does, does play a very important role it does. in helping achieve your state of mind. It does. Great. Thank you so much, Pritika. I, I open the forum to the audience. Uh, Anybody has any questions? Feel free to ask, guys. Any questions? Anybody? Yes, the gentleman in the center. Hi, Pratika. Thank you for the session. Uh, one question I have is basically, uh, as you told that customer go online searching about the products before actually choosing onto one product, right? And these days, a lot of private labels, especially in your category, have uh, started budding. So when it comes to uh, quality or giving the same kind of features, at least on papers, right, they offer the same kind of features, even the warranty, for that matter. So what keeps your brand afloat? What are those two, three key parameters that keeps your brand afloat as compared to the private labels? Uh, so if you could introduce yourself, you are... Yeah, sorry, I'm just Meet. Uh, I'm working with Asian Paints. Ah, perfect. You know a lot of people at Crompton, just me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, we, we have a lot of people from Asian no, no, absolutely. Crompton, right. yeah, so. Um, so I think two things, as a consumer, right? Uh, in fact, there was this study, I would answer that from, uh, you know, with some data. There was this study by Euromonitor, which spoke about lifestyle uh, and how millennials and Gen Zs are actually behaving these days. An interesting data point was that 29% of the consumers are the only ones who are brand loyal. Right? Rest, everyone is ready to try a new brand if they feel that the offering is better. However, said and done, you know, that said, there are certain aspects of a brand which you would want to consider. So when it comes to a brand like Crompton, right, as I said, it's a legacy brand. We are the leaders in, um, you know, fans category. There is a saliency that we have built over there. And in terms of technology, if the brand is offering the same thing, more likely than not, a consumer would go towards a brand which has established itself. So that's one thing. So obviously, the overall brand does play a big role in the consumer decision. Um, in this category, 
as we discussed you know briefly that reviews ratings consumer experience does play a big role so while i may have certain complaints in social media a large part of it is going very smoothly right this is just 0.01% of the overall um, you know service request that i may be tackling um having a good customer experience does matter right and if you are able to, as a brand Absolutely. if you are able to deliver that then it's it's a win win so i think the best information and also second last part would be in today's day and age ensuring that the right information is going to the consumer at the right time correct i may have the Absolutely best product if i'm not Absolutely. showcasing it in the right way you know small things in fact one of the studies that i was referring to we did a lot of consumer emotions to understand how the consumer interacts with our brand on digital you know they actually go on to amazon and they will look at the product images now if you see an amazon page i'm sure all of you use amazon I'm it's sure. just a tiny image and some star rating and the product name that you will be able to register how do you ensure and how quickly can a consumer make a decision that okay this is the product that i want to double click on and check right ensuring that that is right everything is to be seo optimized we should be able to give the right information to the consumer what is it that they're looking for i may have the best technology but if that technical term is not making sense to the consumer i'm out right a consumer in india searches for geezer right instead of a water heater so geezer pe bhi i need to rank i need to rank on geezer also correct so those are the smaller you have advances. to you have to thrive with the world of anomaly 100%, absolutely 100% thank you thank you for sharing i hope that answer. answers your question thanks anyone else from the audience all right so yes, and uh, my name is sandeep and i'm from htp global technologies i i was just looking at the market for last 10 12 years particularly in your segment crompton because i've dealt with crompton earlier quite very much <laughs> See, we have so many brands that have come up. Havels have come up. Inalsa has come up, and everyone has taken an aggressive market share. Is it by design that Crompton is not doing it? Um, see, good I, question. I, yes, Pratika. And that's a business question, but I'll yes. still attempt at answering that. They have a chief digital officer. That is. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I'll I'll tell you what. Um, when it comes to brands, it's great that there is competition. Right? Competition makes you better. competition makes you put your best foot forward um when it comes to offline market when it comes to categories where we are market leaders we are doing well right Crom nothing beats crompton when it comes to fans in the offline category we are still the market leader and by far margin um when it comes to categories like water heaters and air coolers we are doing phenomenally well we are growing at a much faster rate than what the industry is um especially on uh, you know modern platforms like marketplaces i can speak about e-commerce because i do handle e-commerce marketing here um the whole of last year crompton water heaters and air coolers grew faster than the category right um on e-commerce platform so we have been able to crack what the consumer is wanting um and deliver those products at the right right price points there are certain you mentioned in alsa right in alsa prestige the brands which are into the kitchen appliances category and that's something that we definitely want to crack we have already launched products in 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 that category we have built a portfolio over there and this year we will definitely go aggressive on that as well so okay. um i think it's a lot of effort that goes into building a brand and building that saliency for that um if i need to build the same amount of saliency what i have for fans for kitchen appliances is going to be a long journey but we are definitely ready to take that on would you want so, to thrive in that direction just yes I'm follow please up with one more point so just as i say you know if i have to buy fan crompton if i have to buy geezer venus as you just said venus is still top of the mind yeah if i have to buy say uh, some paper i'll go for say anupam etc ultimately we get identified only by brand so how will you break this completely how will you break this mindset of the customer identified by the brand as in sorry i didn't get the question when i say crompton i equated by fan only ha, nothing is, beyond that see that's a good problem to so, have right he, he has a brand a brand silo if i may say yes, so how brand, do you bring brand silo, silo yeah silo. absolutely but that's a good problem to have and that's something that we have actually been able to crack on certain categories right so for you know crompton has that trust that quality that assurance to the consumer that okay this product will work and last long because people have been using crompton fans in their homes forever now now when it comes to an offering which i have which is highly competitive in terms of pricing in terms of feature i am doing innovations you know every quality now and the then product. quality of the product what the service is so if you have had a pleasant experience with crompton on fans 
you are highly likely to go ahead and buy a water heater also from the brand, right? Oh, so it's okay. a good problem for me to have. If you are a fan user, I'm going to stock you and get you to buy other products from That's me. That's a very good hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a proven hypothesis. I don't remember the numbers, but it does, right? Yeah, I mean, any consumer point. would look at a brand that they've tried interested and say, okay, this is a good one thank to buy. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions, guys? All right. Thank you so much, Pratika, for sharing some very valuable insights and, uh, you know, continuing to thrive in this uh, and disrupting the entire marketing in this digital age. Thank you so much once again. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for gracing the occasion. Thank you. Thank you.